NVMe SSDs really are very impressive. They're tiny and they're super fast, but they do have one slight issue. Well, two issues, but putting the issue of price aside, the problem is they do get very hot, which can sometimes lead to throttling, which might be a concern for some consumers, but EK might have a solution to this problem. Today I'm going to be reviewing the EK SSD heatsink, which is a pretty simple product. It's basically two little bits of aluminium that you clip onto an NVMe M.2 SSD to keep those temperatures in check. The SSD that I'm going to be using today is a Samsung 960 EVO. It's not their flagship SSD and it's actually not renowned for having heating issues, but it still does get pretty toasty. First, I had to establish a baseline. I had to see how hot the 960 EVO got without any help. Um, and this was, I wasn't quite sure how to do this because I didn't know what SSD benchmarking suite to use. Firstly, I found out that PCMark had a long-term kind of endurance test for SSDs, which takes about two to three hours to complete and it puts it just, it puts the SSD completely through its paces. The problem with this bit of software though is that you have to pay quite a lot of money for it and I'm, it's a bit of software I'm going to use once and that's it. So I thought, no, let me find something else. Let me use CrystalMark. The problem with CrystalMark though is that it's quite a short test. It does test the actual speed of the SSDs but it doesn't ever push them very hard for a very long time. Except if you put 9 test cycles on a 32 gig file size which means that you're essentially writing and reading pretty much the capacity of the SSD several times through the course of the test. So I thought this would be quite a good way to test the thermal performance of the EVO. During my, my benchmark test, it reached 63 degrees Celsius, which isn't super hot, but it might be a bit hotter than you want. And according to Crystal Mark, that is in the red zone. Um, I didn't really see any throttling though. Um, I saw what I thought was throttling, but once I redid the test with the heatsink on, the test scores were pretty much the same, um, even with the lower temperatures, so it obviously wasn't throttling, it was just the drive dealing with larger file sizes more slowly. Um, yeah, so after I did the baseline test, I decided to put on the heatsink. And now, having established my baseline, I had to go through the hellish process of installing the SSD heatsink on, on my M.2 drive. So it comes with two thicknesses of thermal pad. There's a 0.5 millimeter one and, uh, and a one millimeter one. So the one millimeter one goes on top and the 0.5 on the bottom. Now, just as a bit of a point um, of reference here, I'm not actually gonna take the stickers off. Um, I see th there is a video on YouTube that where the, where, where the, the, the maker of the video says that you should take off the stickers um, because then the thermal pad makes makes slightly better uh, better contact well I don't I, I don't debate with that fact the thing is though that if you do take the stickers off the SSD it actually voids the warranty um, and I don't think that's worth it I, I, I think slightly better thermal pad contact as opposed to a, an, an intact warranty from from Samsung is, is, is isn't a, a particularly good trade-off so that was just an infuriating process from hell to get that on. Um, but it's, it's on now. I don't know if I've broken the drive in the process or not. Oh, let me see if that's properly in focus. I don't actually think it is. There we go. Um, so the issue was that the rear retention clip um, wasn't going on. It, it, didn't, it didn't fit into place because the SSD with the two bits of of aluminium, um, it was too thick. So you can actually see I've, I've scratched the heatsink there in the process of trying to get it on. And um, <clears throat> what I ended up having to do was, it, it like I said earlier, it comes with two thicknesses of, of thermal pad. And it's the rear memory chips that are higher than the rest of the SSD. So what I had to do was actually cut the thicker bit of thermal pad in half and then use the thinner thermal pad 
on on the back kind of memory modules because that was what the clip wasn't fitting over um, hopefully thermally that's not a huge issue but as as far as I'm aware it's not it's not really the memory modules themselves that's the that's the issue when it comes to the heat it's it's the controller um, so we'll see how much of a difference it makes uh, but just be aware of that because that was really infuriating and um, I did it EK doesn't tell you to do this I mean according to the manual and according to the the, the other video that I saw on the internet it's supposed to just clip on even with the thicker thermal pad on on the top but that didn't work for me at all um, so that's something to be aware of so now let's get it back in the PC and see how much of a difference it makes I was quite surprised at how well the heatsink worked, to be honest. Uh, the temperatures dropped by quite a lot. And not only did it drop a lot, it also took the drive a lot longer to reach its maximum temperature. With, without the heatsink, it was almost immediately that the drive hit about 63 degrees Celsius. But with the heatsink in place, it didn't ever go above 53 degrees Celsius, and it took ages to get to that point. So I think thermally it makes a very big difference. And I think with that it's time to draw a conclusion from this test. The heatsink does work really well. It drops the temperatures of the drive by at least 10 degrees Celsius, which is fairly significant. Although it doesn't have an actual performance increase, but the only reason that it doesn't is because in my tests I didn't run into actual thermal throttling. So I think if you have an even heavier load and you do normally suffer from thermal throttling, this heatsink would help and it would prov pr pr provide an actual performance increase. Although my test was quite heavy and I can't imagine many consumers running into a situation where they're gonna, where they're gonna read and write more information and push the SSD any harder than that. So I think when it comes to an actual throttling point of view, the SSD isn't strictly necessary. But it is always nice to have components run cooler. The SSD heatsink is also very cheap, um, so why not? Why not have your SSD run cooler? And it looks amazing. It's available in two variations. There's the one that I have, which is just kind of the plain black with the nickel EK logo. And there's also a nickel plated one, which is a tiny bit more expensive. Um, both of them look fantastic though, and I think for the amount that they cost, it's pretty easy to give them a hearty recommendation. Anyway, with that, thank you very much for watching the video. If you like this video, do subscribe to the channel, like it and comment with some suggestions of future videos you'd like to see. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.